All right, thanks for watching. And since I really like this polar coordinates trick, I want to show you another application of it. Namely, today we're going to evaluate integral from minus infinity to infinity e of minus x squared cosine of 2x squared dx. And you'll see there will be a golden rule, whatever that means. All right, and so again, let's cut. Because we want to, you know, transform this cosine to exponential terms that look alike, instead of considering this integral, let's consider the same thing, but with the complex version, e of minus x squared ei 2x squared dx, which, if you want, becomes integral from minus infinity to infinity of e to the x squared so that's just factor on x squared, and then minus 1 plus 2i dx. And before we continue, I just want to, you know, not remind you, but I want to, you know, um, remind you, okay, <laughs> that our, to get our answer from this integral, you just have to get our real part, take the real part. So note, the answer just becomes the real part of i. Because the real part of this thing becomes e to the minus x squared cosine of 2x squared. And therefore, the point is we will calculate complex integrals, but in the end, remember at the end that we want to just take the real part. All right, and how do you deal with this? Well, just like the usual, on the other hand, you know, we can write the same integral but with y. So i is also the integral from minus infinity to infinity of e to the y squared, 1 plus 2i dy. And then all you want to do is multiply those two things. So you really get i squared is the integral from minus infinity to infinity of e to the x squared minus 1 plus 2i dx integral, I think dx, I write dy, okay, integral from minus infinity to infinity e to the y squared minus 1 plus 2i dy. And well, you can conveniently put this integral into this one, and just as usual, you get that i equals to the following. i then becomes, i squared, sorry, becomes the double integral from minus infinity to infinity, minus infinity to infinity of e to the x squared minus 1 plus 2i, e to the y squared minus 1 plus 2i, dx dy dy dx, but who cares, because it's for me, okay? <laughs> and then this thing, you can just write it as a plus, and you can factor out minus 1 plus 2i, so in the end, you could integral from minus infinity, integral from minus infinity to blah blah blah, of e to the minus 1 plus 2i, x squared plus y squared, dx dy, and as usual, who says x squared plus y squared says polar coordinates, so let's write this in polar coordinates. The angle goes from 0 to 2 pi, and the radius from 0 to infinity, e to the minus 1 plus 2i, r squared, r, the r, d theta. Oh my god, there's an r. <laughs> Very important. And now this thing actually becomes anti-differentiable. So this becomes integral from 0 to 2 pi. All right, now for an antiderivative, you have e to the minus 1 plus 2i r squared. Now, if you differentiate this, on the one hand, you have this factor of minus 1 plus 2i. 
But more than that, if you differentiate that, you get a 2R, which is too much, okay? And so to get rid of that 2, you just divide by 2, and you get that this is from R equals to 0 to R equals to infinity of something d theta. All right, which becomes integral from 0 to 2 pi e to the minus 1 plus 2i infinity over, what is that? I don't know. <laughs> over a constant, 2 times minus 1 plus 2i minus e to the minus 1 plus 2i, 0 over 2 times minus 1 plus 2i, and there's a d theta here. Alright, the question is, what does this become? And if in another video of mine, I was super non-rigorous about this, but it turns out in this case, rigorously, this term goes to zero. And why is that? Note. Look at this term e to the minus 1 plus 2i r squared, well, that becomes, if you want, e to the minus r squared and e to the 2i r squared. Look, this thing is purely imaginary. This is real. So let's consider the absolute value or the modulus. Because this is purely imaginary, this term, you know, it, the modulus is just 1. On the other hand, the modulus of the real term is just itself. And legitimately, as r goes to infinity, this goes to 0. r goes to infinity. And therefore, you have this complex number whose modulus goes to 0. And it's a fact that if a modulus of a complex number goes to 0, that number goes to 0 as well. So this goes to zero as well. And therefore, legitimately, this term boundary term goes to zero. And so what we're left with is just this constant term. So what we really have is that i squared equals to integral from zero to two pi. The top is minus one. The bottom is 2 times minus 1 plus 2i d theta. But this is just a constant, so it really becomes 2 pi times the integral. It's like 2 pi times the value, sorry. Feels like Tetris. I have to erase row by row, okay? So minus 1 over 2 times minus 1 plus 2i cancel out and then this just becomes if you want pi times 1 minus 2i but it's kind of ugly to have i's on the denominator so let's multiply by the conjugate form so 1 plus 2i 1 plus 2i and then you get a pi times 1 plus 2i and this thing becomes like a squared minus b squared, but because we're complex, it's a squared plus b squared. So the denominator is 5. And so i squared is 1 pi over 5 times 1 plus 2i. And then basically, we want to take square roots. And this is the thing I'm sweeping under the rug a little bit. What we want to do is we want to take principal square roots, but in this case, the choice is not plus or minus, the choice is plus. So let's just assume that i is square root of pi over 5 times square root of 1 plus 2i. I get this has to do something in complex analysis with principal square roots. And now, well, if you like complex numbers and you're satisfied with this answer, you can stop here and you can go home happy and make sure to subscribe to my channel. Or let's actually write this in a nicer form. So let's evaluate that square root. So.
Alright, the question is now then, what is square root of uh, 1 plus 2i? And here's a little note, and again, I'm oversimplifying this a little bit. So note, if, let's say z, you have a complex number z, that is r e i theta, so suppose you write this in polar form, then square root of z is equal, again, not always, to square root of r e i theta over 2. Again, not always true, okay? However, if basically theta is small enough, thing like between 0 and pi over 2 or something, and r is positive, it is fine. If we take the principal square root, again, I'd be happy to talk about this another time. Okay, so basically what we have to do, we have to write square root of, we have to write 1 plus 2i in terms of r and theta, and then somehow calculate square root of r and theta over 2. And so note, so what is r? So r in this case is, again, maybe this. So z equals to 1 plus 2i equals to r e i theta. Well, r, there's no argument about this. Ha! No argument. It's a complex joke. R is just the absolute value of this. So 1 plus 2i, which becomes, if you want, square root of 1 squared plus 2 squared, which is square root of 5. Okay. And then theta, we don't really know, actually. All that we know is that we have This number, 1 plus 2i, which you can think of as a triangle with sides at 2, 1, and 2. So yes, you can think of it as arc tangent of 2, but we're not going to worry about this too much. Because this is not why we're here today. We're here to find square root of r e i theta over 2. So in this case, square root of z becomes square root of r, which is square root of square root of 5, and e i theta over 2. All right, so what did I want to say? Remember what we said at the very beginning. We don't want to find i. We really just want to find the real part of i, okay? So really, square root of z is square root of square root of 5 cosine of theta over 2 plus i is square root of square root of 5 i sine of theta over 2. Because we just want to find the real part of this, is actually enough to find cosine of theta over 2. So this is, I guess, the next step. So next step. I forgot which step we're at, but the next step is find cosine of theta over 2. And this is an interesting question. From this triangle, we can find cosine of theta, but we want to find cosine of theta over 2. And for this, what we have to do is to use the half angle formulas, which I have to write down. So cosine of theta over 2 is 1 plus cosine of theta over 2. So again, in this case, with you know, very small angles, it's square root of 1 plus cosine of theta over 2. However, from this triangle, going back to calculus, we can actually find cosine of theta. It's a beautiful problem. It combines in you know, all levels of math. So let me just redraw this picture. This is theta, this is 1, and this is 2. 
And so, what is cosine of theta? Abracadabra, soca toa. So from the Pythagorean theorem, this hypotenuse is square root of five. So cosine of theta is adjacent over hypotenuse, which becomes one over square root of five, which tells you that cosine of theta over two is one plus one over square root of five over two. Let's put square root of five on the common denominator. So square root of five plus one over square root of five times two. And look, here's the nice thing. You can write this in the following form. Square root of one plus square root of five over two over square root of five. And yes, some people do recognize that as the golden ratio. So this really becomes square root of phi over square root of five. Where phi, again, I'm using bar phi, it's supposed to be beautiful phi, okay? Is one plus square root of five over two. So that's what I meant by, for the golden rule we have, you know, our golden ratio that appears here, which also I think explains the title of this video. All right, so we found that cosine of theta over two is square root of phi over square root of five, and therefore square root of z, what did we have? I believe it was square root of square root of five times cosine of theta over two, plus some imaginary parts, which we really don't really care about, which simplifies to square root of square root of five times square root of phi over square root of square root of five. So those ugly terms cancel out, and we get square root of phi. And lastly, how does that relate to our answer? Well, remember what was i? It was, I believe, let me just check, square root of pi over 5 times square root of 1 plus 2i, which becomes square root of pi over 5 times square root of phi plus some imaginary parts. And we're almost done. So which becomes square root of pi phi over 5 plus some imaginary parts. And lastly, how do you get our final answer? Our final answer is just the real part of i, which becomes this. So to summarize, our integral, integral from minus infinity to infinity of e, I believe e to the minus x squared, cosine of 2x squared dx, that's the real part of i, and that becomes square root of pi phi, like high phi, but no pi phi, over 5. So I think it's a beautiful integral where the golden ratio appears. All right, so if you like this complex font, you know, I want to see more integrals and more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.